So I show up to the club. I'm wearing shorts. Everybody else is wearing like club outfits. It was like me and I don't know four or five Washington Capitals. And the guy at the door was like, "You can't come in. Just go buy a pair of pants and come back." So then I go on a mission to find pants in Las Vegas, which is harder than you think it might be. So I I walked around. I found the gift shop and. I asked the lady, I was like, do you have pants here? She was like, we have one more pair of pants left. I was like, I'll buy it. She goes, do you want to try it on? Nope, I don't care. If they're pants, that's all I need. There are these giant khakis. I eventually figure out a way, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm going to walk down the hallway. I'm going to get into the club, no problem. I'm walking down the hallway, and who comes around the corner but Alex Ovechkin? And he's got the Stanley Cup in his hand. And he's just singing, I am the champion, <laughs> my friend. And so I follow him. They let him in. They don't They don't care what he's wearing. Just because he's got the Stanley Cup, they let him right in. Uh, and then the guy stops me again at the door. I was like, I got pants, bitch. Games with Names is presented by WinBet. Football season is here, and you're not going to want to miss out on the action. Bet with the best this season. Who are you betting on? I'm betting with WinBet. How about you? Obviously betting with WinBet, but I was saying, like, who are you going to bet on? Oh, uh, I'm... This is, I think this is Daniel Jones' breakout year. Is there going to be a good prop bet? Like, who's calling the plays for the offensive snaps of the New England Patriots? Because I absolutely have no clue. Are you betting? You're, you're a Patriots man for life. I guess I am, but I don't know who to bet on. Yeah. But I tell you I know who to bet with. Yeah. That's when bet. Beautiful. June 7, 2018, T-Mobile Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada. Lord Stanley's Cup is in the building. With 7.37 left to go in the third period, the first year Vegas Golden Knights are tied with the Washington Capitals. Brett Conley rips the shot from the slot. Mark andre Fleury makes the save. But the puck trickles in, though. This is Game 5 of the 2018 Stanley Cup Finals. You're here joining... Games with names presented by WinBet. I'm Julian Edelman. I'm Sam Morrell. And this is the search for the greatest games of all time. But we have a special, special, special guest. PFT from Barstool. The man. I, I feel like this is a pro-am. I'm, I'm a little scared. I'm a little intimidated because, you know, he's always. I, it's I've like heard, one of those father-son events. Just come on. Yeah, you can putt for me. All right. Thanks. How's that sound? Thanks, Dad. Is this, is this the par three masters? Yeah, those tournaments are awesome. I love the par three. Whenever they hit the shots that, like, skip across the lake and they do all the trick stuff. Yeah, we, we'll we'll do that. I'm, I'll I'll be uh, your caddy today. I like it. All right. What should I hit off the tee here? Straight up? Should I just be like, this was the greatest night of my life? Because for me, when you ask me what game I wanted to do, I thought to myself, well, there's some games I could talk about. I'm not, I'm not a professional athlete. I play my sports for the love of the game, unlike you. Uh, <laughs> so all the games that I would talk about, there aren't, you know, all the, it's not presented by Gillette Razors. It's not glitzy and glamour. You know, it's not on primetime TV. I'm talking stuff deep in the heart of Texas, off the grid. You'll never see it on camera. That's where I like to do my work, kind of under the radar. But this was not the greatest game that I've participated in. This was probably... Yeah, I'm going to say this is the greatest night of my life. Start wow. to finish. It's more like the greatest night ever. The greatest night. This is better than the R words winning Super Bowls in the 80s. Well, I was I was 2 years old when they won their first one. I don't really remember that much. There's pretty... so many uses for R words now. I, that took me a second. I was yeah. like, were they were they called that? I was like, oh no. That well, was, now I call that was... them the C words. <laughs> now they're the C words. Washington C words, which is a lot nicer. But I no, I don't remember. I was blackout uh, when I was two years old, so I don't recall that. <laughs> and then I was six, and I remember some of that game in 1991. Don't be deceived. It's the 1991 Super Bowl, even though on the back of her jackets now, on our official team crest, it listed as 1992. They made a mistake when they made the team crest. That's something that only the C-words could pull off. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's kind of true, though, because the Super Bowl is played in the actual next year. So it technically happened in 92, but it is definitely wrong. It's like the 91, you're the 91 NFL champions. Yeah. But the Super Bowl was played January, whatever, like 29th, uh, 1992. So I remember a little bit of that game. I just remember after the game, my dad got me a, uh, a can of Coke that had the Washington R-Words logo on it. And we just kept that up like on my mantle. 
and that was like our sh- our, our shrine to our local <laughs> sports team. It's the saddest shrine ever. It started to fade after like three years, and it just stayed up there for like ten years. And uh, I did we, the same thing with Santa packs as a Jew. I like the the Coca Cola Santa packs for yeah. some reason. It it was like a forbidden fruit to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was it was not the greatest trophy that we had, but it, it meant a lot to me as a kid growing up. It's like okay, I remember when I my teams weren't all total losers back then. So I grew up a, a Washington Arwards fan, and then um, the Capitals were always like that second tier team for me. But I would go to more Capitals games. It was closer to my house. Tickets were more affordable, so I would go to those games more frequently. I grew up loving the Capitals. We made the Stanley Cup in, like, mid-90s, got swept, lost in four straight games. And uh, after that, it was just, like, a nonstop parade of playoff heartbreak for me as a Capitals fan. I would go almost every year. I think I went to, like, four games in a row in the playoffs where we got eliminated. And I didn't go to any games in between that. So, like, I have... I grew to hate the Pittsburgh Penguins. I grew to hate Mark Andre Fleury, who we'll get to in a little bit because he was a big part of this game too. Um, but the Capitals, they were the closest that I got to tasting success in any team that I rooted for, like as as relatively speaking, an adult. So um, it, this was a like I said, it was the greatest night of my life because some of the stuff that happened after the game was over was even crazier than what happened on the ice that night. I, I've heard that you've actually. You drank from the cup? I drank from the cup. Oh I drank from God. the cup, too. Oh, really? Yeah. What year? What was it 2011 Bruins? Bruins, yeah. Shawnee Thornton. Thornton. Sean Thornton. Were they were they pumped to have you around, or was there anybody on the team that was like, who's this guy? Why is he here drinking out of the cup? I, I, it was early in my career, so like they really didn't know who I was, but Sean Thornton, was he's just a beauty. Yeah. As, as they say in hockey, what is it? He's such a beaut, this yeah. guy. And uh, he, he let me come over and, and take a little... Little sip of Grandpa's old cough medicine out of the cup. I love it. There are definitely some guys that were around me uh, that were giving me the side eye, like, <laughs> "Who the fuck is this guy <laughs> drinking out of my Stanley Cup?" They just won it like three hours before. Some of the guys on the team knew who I was, and I think they were instrumental in helping me get to the place where I was like close enough to the cup to drink out of it. But there were a couple guys that were just like, I think Dmitry Orlov was one. There's a picture. I don't know if you guys have the picture. But I'm drinking out of the cup. I can get to that whole Jack, story now, or I can, I can do it later. It's, well, we might as well. You're, you're feeling hot. You might as well go. Let's right. hear it. So, so after the game's over, um, we're in Hakkasan, which is the club at the MGM, I believe. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Been there uh, a couple times. So I, I, I was Family not, establishment. Uh, yeah, it's a nice place. Family. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely some families made in there. Uh, <laughs> after the game was over, I was wearing my shorts that I'd worn to the arena. It was hot out that day. It was, you know, classic Vegas weather, probably like 92 degrees, something like that. And uh, I wore shorts to the game. And then after the game was over, one of my friends that was in town was like, hey, uh, I'm actually hanging out with Lars Eller and his family my family has like a relationship with them. So we're invited to their suite after the game, went up to the suite, hung out, partied there for a little bit. Then we went to Hakkasan and there were a few capitals that I was with at the time. And they're like, yeah, just come on by. You don't need to like go home or anything. Don't need to change into nicer clothes. Just come to the club. So I show up to the club. I'm wearing shorts. Everybody else is wearing like club outfits, but I came it's like drenched in beer, uh, just looking like a mess. And the guy at the door, it was like me and I don't know, four or five Washington capitals and their girlfriends or whatever. And the guy at the door was like, you can't come in. And I was like, I was I was halfway expecting that anyways, because I'm not on the team. But they were like, no, dude, dude, you're good. Just go buy a pair of pants and come back and we'll wait here at the door for you and we'll get you in. I was like, OK, they're trying to get rid of me. So I'll go buy the pants and then I'll come back. They'll probably be gone, whatever. Um, so then I go on a mission to find pants in Las Vegas, which is harder than you think it might be. <laughs> is, that, is it? Well, if you're inside a casino, There's inside like, a hotel. Yeah, but it's like a mall in, this, in the casino. They, they they want you to spend all the money. But they're not open there. all night. Yeah, they're they not just, open all night. Yeah. So this was probably like, I don't know, 1130 at night, something like that. So I, I walked around. I found the gift shop. The gift shop in the MGM had pants. And I was like, perfect. I don't care what they are. I'm buying them. And I asked the lady, I was like, do you have pants here? She was like, we have one more pair of pants left. I was like, I'll buy it. She goes, do you want to try it on? Nope. I don't care if they're pants. That's all I need. So she sells me the last pair of pants in the building. (laughs) There are these giant khakis. They're massive. The waist is probably like a 42 on them. And you look uh, like Mitt Romney at a jazz game. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like just giant flat front. Uh, I I put them on and they're just falling off left (laughs) and right. Um, I'm holding them up with one of the belt loops. The belt loop snaps. 
because I'm pulling up so hard on to keep these goddamn <laughs> pants on. And uh, I, I eventually figure out a way. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm gonna walk down the hallway. I'm gonna get into the club, no problem. I'm walking down the hallway, and who comes around the corner in the casino? But Alex Ovechkin, and he's got the fucking Stanley Cup in his hands. And we almost run into each other. And he's walking. He's like doing this like big strut down the hallway. He's got a. I don't know, probably like 50 people following him, like taking pictures. And he's just singing, I am the champion, <laughs> my friend. And he like almost walks over me. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go over. So I'm like, where he's going, that's where I'm going. We're going to the same <laughs> place probably. And so I follow him. They let him in. They don't, they don't care what he's wearing just because he's got the Stanley Cup. They let him right in. Uh, and then the guy stops me again at the door. I was like, I got pants, bitch. And they're like, okay, we'll get you back. Uh, to to the back area where where the team is, so I'm hanging out there. There are some people in in management at the team that I had become friendly with over the years, and a couple of the hockey players there uh, recognized me. They're like, "Okay, yeah, you're coming back party with us for a little bit," and then uh, a couple minutes later, the pants are falling off. They're just like falling. I can't keep them up. <laughs> I look ridiculous, and a security guard comes over to me, flashes me with a flashlight in my eye. He's like, excuse me, sir, come with me. I was like, I knew this time would come. I've been kicked out a lot of places. This feels like one of those situations. <laughs> uh, so I start following the guy out, oh, wow. and then he sends me over to another security guard who's flashing a light. He's like, this is the guy. And then that security guard flashes his light to another security guard and then escorts me directly behind the stage where Diplo is playing. He's on stage. Or no, yeah, I think it was Diplo. He was uh, he was doing the DJ stuff at Hakkasan for the Capitals. Ovi is like on the mic with him asking him, hey, play Jesse's girl, play Jesse's girl. So Diplo like stops his set. Maybe it was Chesto. I forget. It was one of those one name guys. And uh, so Ovi's like singing Jesse's girl as loud as he can. I'm being walked directly behind Ovi as he's like celebrating the time of his life. And then they turn me around a corner and there's the cup right in front of me. And uh, they go, do you want to drink out of it? And I was like, wow. sure. It was filled to the brim with beer. So it was a heavy ass cup. So I picked it up and then somebody helped me like from the bottom, lift it up. And I take that sip right there that we're looking at. And you can't see from this angle, but uh, the guy in the white shirt, if you scroll up a little bit, the guy in the white shirt right there, his face is cut off. That's Dmitry Orlov from the, from the Washington Capitals. And the look on his face is like, get this guy off my fucking Stanley Cup. Like he had no idea what I was doing. I still don't know what I was doing there. <laughs> I think it's that way. Yeah, there he is. Wow. There's Dmitry Orlov right there, and he's just fucking furious that I'm drinking out of his cup. And so then I put it down, and then, then I do get kicked out for a second because one of the players or one of the guys back there thought that somebody, some random guy just ran up and drank out of their Stanley Cup. So they kicked me out momentarily. Then I got brought back in for the rest of the party. It was a wild night. Who snapped the picture? Uh, just some random guy that was there. And, and so he he was a listener, part of my take. He was like, oh, fuck, it's PFT. I was like, dude, I'm about to drink out of the cup. Can you please take a picture for me? <laughs> and so yeah. he took that picture. I got his number. I got the uh, text from like two hours later. I think I was going to end up with any evidence of it whatsoever. Um, but yeah, one of the one of the craziest moments of my life right there for sure. Can, can we talk about leading up to this? Because you, you hate the Penguins with a passion. Yeah. I mean, it's like Crosby and Ovechkin drafted together, two of the best of all time. I mean, can you go through just your hatred? Yeah, I mean, it was like every year. They, it seemed like they would bounce us out. And we we're always the two best teams uh, out of the East. But the way that the NHL playoffs are set up, they don't really protect. They, it's more about like the separating the divisions from each other and how, how the brackets are set up. So it was like every year we would play the Penguins in the second round, it felt like. And we just had a lot of really heartbreaking losses to them. I remember 2000, shit, what was that? 2009, 2010, where the series went back to D.C. for game seven. I was really pumped for that. And they scored like six goals on us in yep. the first period. Uh, there's just been like a lot of times where it was like the Capitals are the best team in the entire NHL during the regular season. And then we're going to get to the playoffs and we're going to run into the hottest goalie ever. It was always like that. One time that happened with uh, Henrik Lundqvist. We were better than the Rangers and we and we lost to them. He's just too handsome. He's too handsome. He's I agree. Hot man. He's really good looking. Everybody named Hank, I feel like, is just an absolute lady killer uh, these team days. Team Hank, baby. Team Hank. Team Hank. Uh, Hank Hill. Not really. Uh, no, he, Hank Hill could he get wasn't. It. <laughs> <laughs> Hank Aaron was good looking. He was. And and big hands. Big hands. You know yeah. what that means. 
Uh, yeah, I did. They got gloves. big gloves. Big gloves. Big gloves. Yeah, big gloves. So yeah, it was uh, it was just year after year of running into disaster in the playoffs, and it really it beat me down as a fan for a while. And uh, I, I've I, I reached a point where I never thought that it was going to happen until this year, and we got to the playoffs, and I was like, you know what, this team feels. It was after the first um, the first series against Columbus, I think. We were down 2 nothing, and then game three in overtime, we won. And I was like, okay, I'm officially back. I feel like this team might be different. And we had a, we had a fun team to root for, man. It, it felt like everybody was rooting for the Caps that year, too, trying to see Ovi get his first, his first Stanley Cup. Uh, like it's like Dirk or Elway or guys who everyone wanted to get one, and it took them a while, you know? Yeah, it, it made it better in retrospect that it, that it waited that long. Um, where everybody, they all got their jokes off. It was like every year after Ovi would lose in the playoffs, somebody would tweet out that meme of like Ovi holding the, the golf clubs like it was a Stanley Cup. Yeah. It's like, oh, first of all, Ovi doesn't play golf. He's Russian. Okay, <laughs> Dude, like that's, I, he, he's an insane athlete. I bet he could play pretty good golf. So His mom was an Olympic basketball player. Dad didn't, Was his dad in the Olympics as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got, he's, I mean, he's got athlete blood. His first round of golf that he ever played, he hit a hole in one. He's not a golfer, but they took him out one day. And he hit a fucking hole in one the first time ever out. Hockey guys are really, that's like the same kind of motion. Those guys are studs at, at golfing. I feel like people that are, are really good at like three point shooting. Yes. And foul shots are also good at golf. Hunters. Yeah. Hunters. Uh, no, goal, punters. Oh, punters. Hunters and kickers. Yeah. Because they do the same motion it's, it's over that and pendulum over again. Shit. They're, they're in their psycho in the head a little bit. Yeah. They just get locked in to this one thing that they do repeatedly. So, uh, I, I, I was, Almost at my wits end with the Capitals. I was like, if it doesn't happen this year, it's never going to happen. Well, it did happen. It Those did. were our first initial thoughts to this game, which is obviously the Las Vegas Knights in their first year ever in existence, getting to the Stanley Cup final, playing against PFT's Washington Capitals. Now, on this podcast, we, we break down what was going on in regular life, pop culture, what were we doing on the day of the game or in the era of the game? This game, June 7th, 2018, number one movie, Ocean's 8. Hmm. Didn't hmm. see it, did you? Never saw it. Ocean's 8, was that the one? The female with, cast. Yeah. I think I saw that like the day that I got back from Vegas, actually. I came back and I was so hungover from my trip. I was like, I just got to go sit in a cold room for three hours <laughs> and, and try to like sweat out or not sweat out, but try to like just get whatever it is out of my body. What like reset body? myself to zero. Just just a bunch of alcohol. and Yeah, just a bunch of alcohol. Just a lot of alcohol. It'll do that to you. Not Vegas. a great, not a great, uh, <laughs> I guess, uh, review for the movie. Well, I, you know what? No, I, it sucked. The movie sucked. <laughs> I, I, gave it, I gave it zero stars, but I did fall asleep for almost all of it. The real heist was paying the all-female cash less than they would have paid men. Julia Roberts was great. <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought she was great in that movie. I was never an Oceans guy. Oh, the first one's killer. Uh, all right, no? we get it. It's heist fun. movie. You don't like a heist movie? I like a heist movie, it's but fun. it was it was all right. I feel like I I saw it without even seeing it. You remind me of the gymnast in the first one. Ooh, a little bit. <laughs> the Asian guy? <laughs> yeah, it's just real nimble. It's a real nimble cat. <laughs> like, a probably, yeah, like a squirrel. Yeah, like you a probably squirrel. You probably always land on your feet, right? If I threw you out of this building right now, what floor are we on? Fifth, five. You'd probably land on your feet. I'd land on my feet and both of my tib and fibs would just be shattered because I have no cartilage or ligaments or anything in my knees right now. So I, I learned a fun fact about squirrels. You probably already know this as, as one yourself. Yeah. But you know that squirrels, they can't die by falling out of a tree. No. Their terminal velocity is too slow where when they hit the ground, it's not going to be enough to kill them. So you could throw a squirrel out of an airplane and it would be fine. No way. <laughs> yeah. You can't throw it out of an airplane. <laughs> you should try. I swear Let's to get God. a squirrel. I swear to God. You want me to prove it? Prove it. Okay, I'll prove it. Hang on. Just give me one second. I've got an expert. I've got a squirrel guy. Who's this squirrel guy? <laughs> Billy football? Buddy. Is, are you bringing Billy football Buddy, this? you know who my squirrel guy is. This kid knows everything about animals, footballs. That's about it. And like performance enhancing drugs. No, that's you. <laughs> it's your buddy Rodney Harrison. <laughs> you can't you can't walk me into that one, Jules. Come on. <laughs> Hang on, he's I got my squirrel guy coming in hot. Does he pick up? You gotta pick up the boss. You right? better. I know that he doesn't have anything else to do. Hey Billy. Hey, I'm here with Jules. <laughs> your um, eyebrow looks good. What's up? Um, I, I said that you're my squirrel guy, you're my squirrel expert. Is it true 
Could you throw a squirrel out of an airplane and would it survive? You could, technically. It won't die because of the fall, but it could die from, like, being thrown out of an airplane and, like, getting hit by the jet engine or something. <laughs> like, squirrels <laughs> damage it because they're, like, evolved that their terminal velocity is too low to kill them on impact. So... It's just cool, cool facts about squirrels. That is a cool fact. All right, Billy, thank you for being my squirrel guy. <laughs> Thanks, Billy. Get back to work. He's fishing. He's fishing. It's like four o'clock on a Monday in New York. Billy's out <laughs> fishing on a where lake is he, somewhere. Where is he fishing on the, the <laughs> Hudson? I don't know. <laughs> I, I've learned not to ask too many questions when it comes to Billy. Just like if it's a small thing that I'm upset about, just let it slide. But I, one thing Billy did not address. Also, if you throw a squirrel out of an airplane. The oxygen, if you're up super high, is so low that the squirrel will probably suffocate on its mm. way down. There wouldn't be enough for it to breathe into its little squirrel lungs. But the fall would not kill the squirrels is the important part. I think he'd be all right with them there. I mean, they got heart. Squirrels <laughs> are nimble. <laughs> they do. You know yeah. what I mean? Some of these ridiculous trends, CBD cures all. You guys remember that kick in 2018? I, I use some CBD still. I'm, I'm a fool. I don't know if it works. I, I, I try to use works. it every day. It's, I think it's placebo for the most part. I think so. It's like it was also a bunch of people being like, "I want to get as close to doing weed as possible without doing weed." You know, like, "Oh, you can buy this weed at a gas station," <laughs> yeah. and it gave you like no psycho psychoactive effects whatsoever. Um, CBD, like the the inflammation cream that you would use. I feel like that worked a little bit, but it's not because of the CBD. I think it had like actual other anti-inflammatory. They can put actual weed in that. Stuff. They can yeah. put the stuff that gets you high in like that, but Bengay? it just doesn't get you high when you put it through. Or the Tiger right? Bomb. Yeah. I, I used to inject CBD. I would freebase it sometimes. So I would mainline it. <laughs> in between work. your toes? Yeah, it didn't work at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a keister myself. Um, <laughs> you boof it? I like to boof. For boofing CBD, Remember? we're getting... This is the... Least amount of anxiety I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> What's this in my life dance challenge? Oh, the yeah, the Drake. Remember the 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 music video where he just sat and danced all day. Is that what this is? This is kind of a bummer and kind of a downer. But I do remember on this day, uh, like I was just getting back to the hotel at like six a.m. and I checked Twitter and it was like Anthony Bourdain just killed himself. Oh, yeah, and I was like. Must have been a huge fan. I remember Knights that fan. too. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that too because I was playing a gig in Timonia, Maryland, staying off the side of a highway in a Holiday Inn, and I was like, "If this guy's killing himself, <laughs> what chance do I have?" Yeah, I mean his his life was like, "We're gonna pay you millions of dollars to go to the coolest cities," and it's, yeah, now we're getting to a dark place. <laughs> <laughs> let's just let's get back to hockey, guys. On this same day, Jerry Marin. Last surviving Wizard of Oz Munchkin died at 98. It's a good run for a Munchkin. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's a hell of a run. Yeah, I, the last it, surviving little one. people, guys. Did they have like a pack <laughs> you together? Said, I was going off what you said. Well, that that was the character in in oh. the show. They were called like the little Munchkins, right? Yeah. How many no. Oompa Loompas we got around uh, kicking from the chocolate factory? We represent <laughs> the lollipop. Remember that song? <laughs> of course. I used to love that song. And uh, what did what did Sam tweet? I didn't tweet. I guess what what do we got from Julian? What did I go? RKK. It was his birthday. Oh, Bob Kraft. RKK. Or no, wait. Yeah. One RK of the best men I know. Your kindness, caring, and passion for everything New England is an inspiration. He just got a big lifetime achievement award at the business uh, sports business journal awards. I went to. He's pretty good with everything. He, I mean, he gives a lot for a lot, and. Uh, how many of the shirts does he own? The like blue shirts with the white collars on them? He switched it up. What's I he wearing now? He doesn't wear the collar or the pink the pink tie no more. The collar's very like eighties Wall Street. It's kind of cool. Yeah. I like that about him. Yeah. yeah. Now he, I feel like he's gotten cooler recently. Way cooler. He's, he's got his own Air shoe. Force ones and shit. Oh, they're called aircraft ones. Oh, really? Yeah, they call them the aircraft ones. They're actually like a, a custom Air Force One limited edition. Got a pair of them. They're pretty tight. They're a little bedazzled, black, white, white, white sole. It was um, uh, it was pretty. Ins it it hangs out with Meek Mills. Meek Mills brought him onto the stage. I mean, you call Meek Mills? Meek Mill? Like he's a cereal? Meek Mill? <laughs> yeah, Meek Mill. Yeah, Meek Mill. <laughs> Meek Mill. I'm not a Philly guy. No, that's what that's what happens. That's when you can tell that you're starting to like become your father is when you start pluralizing everything. That's going like what are your kids playing the Nintendos? <laughs> 
<laughs> Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, so th- now we're going up to the run of this playoffs and the Pittsburgh series versus the Caps. Can you take us through that? The bet, everything that you you go all out with. Yeah. So um, I'm trying to remember exactly what the bet was that we had for that series. I remember watching Game Six. We were on a flight out of New York, going down to Baton Rouge. We're gonna meet and interview Coach O for the first time. Oh, yeah. And we get on this airplane and it's basically me, Hank, Big Cat. I think, I'm not sure if Liam was with us or not at that point, but um, it was a very small crew. We were almost the only people on that on that flight. And the game went into overtime. And I was like, you know, through years of seeing this same movie happen to me over and over and over again, I was like, well, we're going to lose this game in overtime. Then the Penguins are going to fucking smash us game seven, like five to nothing. So I was in, I was super anxious we end up winning that game because Netsov scores in overtime. He does the bird celebration. I start running up and down the aisle on the airplane, freaking out. The, the uh, <laughs> flight attendant brings me a bottle of mini champagne. I pop that thing open. I'm like, I can't believe that we're doing this. I can't believe it's actually happening. So that was one of the best, one of the best couple of days that I've had as a sports fan, not only just winning that game, but also getting to like share my joy with Coach O the next day. I was wearing like an Ovechkin shirt. He was we talked for a second about like being a hockey fan. Coach O doesn't know shit about hockey, by the way. Like, why would he? He's from like you Louisiana. Know, yeah, deep Louisiana. Deep. He's probably never seen ice in his life. Ever. And so he was just like, Oh, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm happy. <laughs> you seem like you seem like you're a good fan. <laughs> now did you get a little nightmares because the, the, the first time that the Capitals went to the Stanley Cup final, they got swept by Detroit. That w- so were you starting to feel Feel a little nervous that like this could be deja vu. We get there, we get over the hump of beating the pep, the Penguins, and now we got to go battle in the championship against some like destiny team. Well, what happened actually? There was, there was a series in between that, so I felt like at the time when we beat the Penguins, yeah, I was like, that's huge for us because this never happens, yeah. never happens. So this team is different, um, but we still had to play against the Lightning, Lightning, in in the finals, and they were a really good team, and they still are really still good team like right now. It's, yeah. Isn't it kind of crazy to think of a Tampa Bay, Florida team really? They're like they're dominant in hockey. Well, that's what that's the Tom Brady magic. So they they became dominant in hockey once Tom Brady moved to Tampa, and then the. Uh, uh, the Rays got good at baseball. The Rays made the World Series. It's just everywhere Tom Brady this effect. guy is. It just wins. Just excellence. I mean, San Francisco, when he was there, that's when the Niners had their their run. Also, Jack- I think the porn star capital of the country, Tampa. Is it? Everywhere uh, Tom goes, they win. That, no, that's Jimmy G with the porn stars. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, G- yeah. Jimmy G. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we don't talk enough about the fact that, like, Jimmy G got a lot of shit for that picture, but... He was taking her out to dinner. Like he was he was treating her like a gentleman would on a date. He wasn't like sliding in the DMs, be like, yo, can I come over? Eggplant emoji, water emoji. He was like, Would you like to go out for a nice meal? Yeah, let's go to a nice meal at the most paparazzi spot in downtown Beverly Hills. <laughs> like those are just nothing but great decisions for <laughs> keeping everything DL. It's so, I think it's very thoughtful for him to do that. Like we we should be applauding him. Like, who says chivalry's dead? He's going to take you out to Nobu first before you go back. That I mean, that's the kind of guy Jimmy G is, I guess. You know, he's those Italians are just smooth. <laughs> I feel like he could have taken her to Subway and still banged her, though. <laughs> I don't feel like he needed to take her to Nobu. But I don't know. I don't know. I it's think, a classy guy. I think he's a classy guy. But Meatball? Yeah. Meatball sub? Yeah, yeah there you Meatball go. sub. Although their footlongs aren't a foot long. Are they not? They had that class action lawsuit. Turns out they were all 11 inches, not 12. And so they were defrauding America oh my for, God. for years and years and years. So we straightened that right out. And their bread is made out of yoga mat. I'm is... fine with that, though. Like yoga, <laughs> it, it tastes good. It and their taste, tuna. It smells great. Yeah. Their tuna is not really tuna. It's dolphin, right? Yeah. So I don't, Subway's had some uh, pretty adverse situations to overcome. Jared Fogle. <laughs> This is, we don't... RG3? Is, it could be argued that RG3 is a worse, <laughs> worse spokesman for your brand than Jared Fogle. What do you I, think? I'm joking about that. I love RG3. Yeah. <laughs> right. How do you think he's doing on TV? I think he's doing okay. Yeah. He's he's like finding his, his, his groove. groove a little bit. Yeah. It takes you a while. I mean, you know. How do you think right. Jared Fogle is doing in prison? <laughs> I, I don't I know. know. <laughs> you know you're, Julian, you're actually like... you. I, I watch your stuff on Inside the NFL. It's good. You You do good on TV. Uh, RG3. We'll see tomorrow. Got to go to the Emmys. Got nominated. Oh, so really? We'll see. You and how many other people? They like nominate, 50. They nominate everyone. I know. For the I sports know. Emmy. But hey, still a resume builder. It is. And you can say like for the rest of your life, I won an Emmy, which is pretty well, I don't cool. know if I'll win it. I think uh, 
There's a couple of people that are going to win that thing, but... What are you nominated for? Uh, what am I nominated for, Jack? Up and comer. Up and coming? Wow. I'm up and coming. The bad thing is, like, you can't get nominated for that twice. Can't. <laughs> like, that's Who else is up and coming? Who's in your... Who's field? in our group, Jack? We got for the Sports Emmy of Outstanding Sports Personality Emerging On Air Talent is the technical name. Mm-hmm. Okay. Taylor Rooks, Greg Olson, Eli Manning, and Jules. Wow. Taylor's going to win. She's good. Yeah, but Taylor, I feel like she's already here. Like, Taylor's been around for a while. That's a stretch of the definition of up and coming. I think that's actually disrespectful. Eli's sneaky good. It's disrespectful to Taylor Rooks that she's included in, like, a newcomer award. Like, she's been good for a long time. Eli, is he's your, your biggest competition yet again. Wouldn't that be something? Fucking Eli. <laughs> Cover five. Down the sideline. <laughs> He's going to toss that away to Manningham right in front of you. Jesus Christ. I was literally right in front of that catch. Yeah. It was a good pass. It was a spectacular pass, but it's technically like the worst place to go with the ball in that coverage. He should never have thrown that ball? Should have never have thrown that <laughs> ball. He should never have thrown that ball. I mean, a real student of the game would know that. But um, So then, yeah, you got the series against Tampa. Uh, how yeah. are you feeling at this point? Uh, I felt I felt okay going into that series. Then I got nervous as it went on. Um, but the guy that turned that series around for us was Tom Wilson. Because Tom Wilson, he gets a lot of shit. People say he's a dirty player. But if you asked everybody in the NHL, do you want this guy on your team? They'd be like, absolutely. That's the perfect guy that I want on my team. He will beat the fuck out of you. He will hit the shit out of you. And he's a great goal scorer. And he's a good guy and a teammate. And he's a man rocket. So if you just wingman for him all the time, you get the runoff, you're doing great. So everybody on the team loves Tom Wilson. Yeah, and I'm I'm getting these stories from like Chicklets, because the Chicklet Chicklets guys love him. He's been on that podcast. Those dudes are a few awesome. Times. They're incredible. Yeah. Uh and Biz has a way of of talking to them that just makes them like open up about everything. Isn't hockey talk like some of the funnest stuff to listen to when you hear two like Canadians and even the guys that are from the United States that play hockey sound Canadian? Yeah. Because they're around Canadians all the time. Yeah. And like just their their ter- terms of endearment are like completely different and nothing like you've ever heard. And like it's just it's it's a fucking one of it's crazy. It's also addicting being around hockey guys. You start to use their language. Got it. And their vernacular all the time. Uh, there was one time we were talking to Ryan Whitney, I think, and we asked him about hockey nicknames. Like, what's the flow chart like for a hockey nickname? Because you're either going to be like, and you're going to use put the word or the letter Y at the end of it, or you're going hey. to put like ER at the end of it. So it's like, uh, Gretz, well, I guess Gretzky is a bad one. Or no, oh, so like they called Wayne like Wayno sometimes. Wayne. And you sometimes you just toss a Y at the end of it. You're like Willie. We're going to call him Willie or over. You know, like you have, you just put like these, three suffixes at the ends of all these names and boom, that's how you get there. And that's, that's who you are for the rest of your life. And then I, I'm always curious how, cause Thornton was Thornton. Yeah. Sean Thornton was Thornton. I'm curious how Paul Bissonette got the nickname biz nasty. Like how nasty of a guy do you have to be <laughs> for other hockey players to be like, yo, this guy is disgusting. It's like is when he- they called Ivan the terrible, the Nazi, it's like, well, you're bad even for a Nazi, you know? <laughs> yeah. That guy sucked. Yeah, that's exactly. That's a, a perfect way to describe <laughs> biz nasty. But yeah. Um, I love the hockey guys, but we were down. Um, we were down actually in Tampa for this game seven of the Eastern conference finals. And the, the game before Tom Wilson had just beaten the shit out of somebody on, on the lightning. I forget who it was. And we got the, we got great seats for this and we were close enough to like hear the sound of Tom Wilson's knuckles, like destroying guy, punching a guy's helmet off Oof. as he's like smiling. I remember watching the dude's helmet go flying away and Tom Wilson's like laughing like a maniac as he's doing it. And I was, uh, I was, I was very pumped to be, to be in the crowd for that game. And at that point, I was like, I was so, so confident going into the Stanley Cup. I was so confident, actually, that we won game two in the Stanley Cup to level the series at 1-1. I was out at a bar here in Soho, and um, the server brought over champagne bottles. I was like, you want to pop these champagne bottles? I was like, hell yeah, I do. And so we got behind the bar and started popping champagne bottles. It was a Caps bar. And um, I go into work the next Monday. You didn't feel like that was bad luck at all, popping it early? I in, re- in retrospect, I I probably shouldn't have, but <laughs> I went into work. That's confidence right there. And Portnoy was like, what the hell are you and Nate doing popping these champagne bottles? You just won one game of the Stanley Cup finals. I was yeah. like, that's 
that's where Dave's inner like Boston sports fan came out. Yeah. He's, tell, way. he's telling me that. Yeah, exactly. Way. He's like, do your job. Yeah. He's telling me to act like I've been there before. Like I've said, I've never seen a Washington Capitals Stanley he's blacked Cup out when he was two win for the, yeah. the you know for the R words and, yeah. and six he, it was a blur and they've so. been around since what seventy four they've never won the, no the Capitals they won a Stanley Cup I want to say in like forty didn't they win one in like nineteen seventy something I don't know um, Let's check that Jack Jack I don't know I mean you're the capitalist guy you got to know that Capitals I don't, I don't know maybe I just maybe I I misremember maybe oh, I'm probably thinking about the yeah, yeah, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about the bullets when they won back back in the day, but um I've literally never seen the Capitals win a Stanley Cup finals game before. Um I thought maybe it was like one of those rinky dink like early like 60s when there were like 12 teams and maybe they they stole one then. Uh but no, it was it was a situation where I'd never seen any sort of success in the finals before. And so I was like, "You know what? I'm going to pop this bottle and uh, I don't care. I was just so excited to get one. It's it's loser mentality for sure. But I'm a loser. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, who are you talking to here? I've never won anything before. Well, at least the jinx didn't come out. They yeah. they go on to win it, and and they're against an expansion team. I mean, this is crazy. That, they're going against a Vegas. This is their first year existing. Yeah. So game one when they beat us, I was I went to a dark place for a little bit, and I was like, you know what, this this would be the absolute worst. If we lost to a first year team with Marc Andre Fleury, the goalie, goalie. from Penguins. the Pittsburgh Penguins that had just ruined my life for like 12 years nonstop. Um, so the, the thought definitely went through my mind that where I was like, uh, maybe not. But then game two, that's when Holtby had his save, one of the greatest saves I've ever seen in hockey, where he just reached his stick out across the goal line as he was diving, brushed it off the goal line. We ended up winning that game. After game two, I actually felt I felt really good about where we were. Confidence was soaring. 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 Then we went back to D.C., won two in a row. We're up 3-1. Now, is it it's in the bag? Is it in the bag by then? Well, after game... Or were there, there, was no, there was like no sense of they could come back. You guys knew you had it done. After game four, I, I really felt like it was, it was going to happen. Because game four, I think that's when Ovi came out there and he was wearing like the Ivan Drago outfit before the game. I think he was wearing like a bathrobe. And like a towel around his head. And he was talking to the media with his big ass chain. And he was just like, it, it, we captioned it and sold a bunch of shirts that just said like, if they die, they die on it with <laughs> Ovi. And I was like, this is, we were, I'm confident because Ovi's confident at that point. And so we won game four, I want to say like six to two or something like that. And uh, going now going to Vegas, I did feel like when I got to the hotel, I was like, did I feel like I'm. I, this is going to be the most painful of all of them if I just flew all the way out here to watch them What lose. kind of hotel are you staying in? Do you treat yourself? I think it was Caesar's Palace. I'm pretty sure it was Caesar's. So it was it was a decent room. It wasn't didn't break the bank or anything. They got it was dope a business villas. trip. They got good they got great villas. I've never been to them. They have like these like the you have your own pool and st- or is that the win? I think it's the win. Uh, I think Caesar has some sick policies. Let's say it's the win for the sake of this podcast. Yeah, and and, and the win too. The wind yeah. has amazing. Wind's awesome. It's definitely the win. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. But yeah, I. Uh, what is this? Oh, there we go. If, yeah, if they die. They die. See, that's a pretty. That's a pretty badass outfit, right? You see that guy coming he, at you pregame, and you're like, "We're done." He'd be someone that'd probably be insanely cool to like root for, just because you know what I mean. Yeah, He's besides got, besides the Putin stuff I've had to deal with it, for besides the last, that, like, six months. Besides that, tough. of course, terrible. But, like, he he is lovable. He is. He's a lot of fun. Like, the joy that he gets out of, out of playing hockey and scoring goals. Like, he scores 50 goals a season, but every time he scores, he acts like it's his first time. It's like <laughs> a little bit Brett Favre in that way. That's where, what, where, that's like, exactly. he smiles, he jumps into the boards, has a great time out there. He actually lives really close to where my parents live now uh, in McLean. And occasionally, if I go back to visit them, I'll be like going for a walk around the neighborhood or taking the dog out or something. I'll see Ovi just like biking a BMX bike up and down the street. <laughs> wow. Just like smiling, having a great. It's actually funny. The first time I saw him, I was taking the dog for a walk and I'm going around this lake and uh, there's this woman that's walking towards me and she like smiles and waves at me. And I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? I was like, that is a very beautiful woman that just said hi to me. And then. About like two minutes later, I see Ovi riding his bike 
right up the street. A BMX. A BMX bike. He was like he was rehabbing from an MCL, and that's what he was doing, just like pedaling yeah. his bike back. And a forth GT down Interceptor. <laughs> yeah, not even a mountain bike. No, dude, it was like the bikes that, that <laughs> we used to ride when we were like eight years old. Pegs? That's, did he have pegs on it? He, I think he did. You know what? I just got out of this story that you probably grew up very rich if you live in the same neighborhood as <laughs> Oh, I, so you're not far <laughs> off in that the neighborhood is very rich. But um, it's it was like my grandfather's house that he built in like 1940 before there was anything in that neighborhood. So it's a small, tiny little house that just got surrounded by these giant mansions everywhere. So no, I grew up. I grew up. Uh, my mom was a teacher, and my dad couldn't work. So it was well, good. We, yeah, te- having a teacher, she molded the future. Exactly. That's why you're so. That's why you can speak so. I bet. Because she was a teacher? Because your mom's a teacher. What kind of teacher? She was an orchestra teacher. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So, maybe maybe Jesus. not the whole speaking thing. <laughs> um, but I can play... I think I can play Ode to Joy on the violin still. Can Ooh. you? I think so. Maybe. I mean, it translates to guitar. And so, like, that's where I learned I learned music from. But, no, I did not, by any means, grow up, grow up rich. But now the neighborhood is, like, super, super wealthy. And so... I, I just got this confidence boost. I was like, yeah, man, this beautiful woman just waved. I mean, she gave me this like really nice smile. And then uh, I see Ovi ride his bike back uh, towards me. And I'm like, wait, that's definitely like Ovi's wife that just said hi to me. And so I, I looked her up online. I was like, yep, that's who she is. And then she walked past me later and she was like, I see your dog out all the time. I just wanted to come by and say hi to it. And I was like, oh, okay. And so she just pet the dog and walked away. I was like, no, she just liked the dog, not me. Back to back to the cellar with with me. So Ovi's wife was hitting on you. No, I'm saying she just liked the dog. So you had a being friendly out of respect to Ovi. Wow. I would never. I Don't would never. Do it, wow. Dude. I would never. I didn't Ovi know you had that kind of game, Bubs. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's energy right there. That's BDE. If you give me a dog, that's when I'm at my best. That's a good move. They're the best wingman. Little yeah. dog. Uh, this was a big boy. This is a big boy. But my Ooh. move with a puppy. I used to sell used dogs. That's why I called my job. But I was really just. You know, I worked for like a dog adoption nonprofit. Slinging dogs growing up. And so I used to slinging dogs to get more donations for my nonprofit. I would pick the puppies up and then it's like a car would drive by. I would just give them a little puppy wave with like the hand. And then it was like a magnet. They just pull over and just go over, put some money in the jar for the dogs. <laughs> and then also we're, we, you know, clearly the other team was the Las Vegas Knights. First season ever. First pro team in Vegas. So they had they had a little steam record 50, 24 and 709 points. First Pacific, third in the Western Conference, beat L.A., beat my San Jose Sharks, beat Winnipeg, broke the record for the most wins for expansion team in their first season, which was previously 34. First expansion team in pro sports to finish above 500 that did not join from a different league. Mm. They had this whole expansion draft. How do you know? Do you do you know how this thing goes? The expansion draft. I remember they they changed some of the rules to make it more competitive. They wanted this team to be good right from the get go. Oh, so you, you think that this was designed? It was rigged. It yeah. was rigged. NHL rigged. Well, they they were <laughs> they wanted to have the uh, they wanted to have a team in Las Vegas be successful. They yeah. didn't want mm. that to be a flop from the get go. So. The way that the draft was set up, they got much better players than you would normally get from that. The NFL should take a book out of that and put a new team in, in Washington, real, D.C. And, and then maybe... A real team in Washington, D.C. That would be nice. A new team. I actually think that if you created an expansion team in Washington, D.C., it would have more fans instantly than the C-words have right now. <laughs> We're down that bad. I'm dead serious. Like, the the entire city is like, we don't, we don't give a shit about the C-words. We're like... This is too much for me to care about until Dan Snyder sells a team. Don't Wasn't it one of the biggest, like, most profitable franchises, though, oh. until just recently? But Has, yeah. It had the biggest stadium in the National Football League yeah. for, like, the longest time, 90,000. Yeah. Wow. And it's a shithole, and it sucks. <laughs> well, didn't someone almost die there? A lot of people. What was... Uh, RG3. RG3. <laughs> and then... Uh, no, that was Philly. Or was that... No, the, some of the stadium... Hurts? Some of the stadium uh, collapsed... Almost on to Jalen Hurts yeah. this year. Damn. Which, yeah, that would have been that would have been bad. There was like a, a sewage leak earlier this season where the sewage was pouring onto people. There was another pipe that burst or a sprinkler that went off and flooded a part of the stadium. It's just bad. It's it's soulless. That's what I don't like about it. You can build a, a decent sized stadium. You can build a ninety thousand seat stadium if it has like a little bit of 
personality to it. That's mm-hmm. great. But this place, it's just a cement bowl designed to pack as many people in as possible. And it's got these columns and some of the seats that you sit behind. And you can't even see the fucking field. It's like from 20-yard line to 20-yard line, you're just behind a pole. And you can't see anything whatsoever. So, yeah, I hate that place. That reminds, reminds me of Candlestick back in the day when they used to share the stadium with the Giants. They'd roll out the bleachers. And I would sit. You you brought like a, a like a carton of milk, and you can get like a ticket for like eleven bucks or something, or ten bucks. And they'd sit you in an area where you literally couldn't see the game because where they the bleachers would come out to make form up the stadium for the football team. We'd be over in this corner, and like, yeah. 80s design was not not there but at that, least it had like a little a little soul to it right the stick was awesome so it had personality the stick was awesome That's a beautiful I mean, beautiful stadium well it's not there anymore yeah but uh it was it was an amazing place the things we remember about this game the pre-game theatrics at golden knights games yep they 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 know how to throw a party in vegas yeah it's actually it's very cool if you've never been to a golden knights game at the time, since it was a Stanley Cup Finals, I was like, look at this Mickey Mouse cartoon Disneyland shit. Before that, I was like mad about it because I was like, this isn't hockey. Even though I'm not like a hockey guy that would traditionally be like, you know, standing up for the lore of the sport or like being mm-hmm. humble. At the time, I was just, I wanted the game to get started. So, it was candy ass. Yeah, it was candy ass. It was absolutely <laughs> candy ass. So before the game, they, they brought out like all these archers and stuff. It was like medieval times, which is maybe one of my favorite places yeah, it's to awesome. be. Medieval yeah. times is awesome. I just didn't want to deal with that before the game. But there were um it was like a fifteen minute uh like play that they put on. Like a like dinner in a in a combat theater before the game even started. And also we did have a bet going into this game. It was a bet me against John Taffer from Bar Rescue. Oh wow. Because he was a, a he's a big Vegas guy. He's a huge Golden Knights fan. And so um, tradition of Sporting there. Yes. It's Sporting funny to be a big fans. Golden Knights guy. They just started existing. <laughs> tradition. It's yeah, well, tradition. The city, like Las Vegas, actually got really behind the Knights when they first came out. Like, yeah. they were the people that live in Vegas were pumped to have a sports team there. Cause, like, usually their entire, like, all their economy is built around, like, other people from out of town. This was, like, their thing that they sure. had together. Yeah. So it was the fan base was actually pretty cool there. And Taffer was like, if the Capitals beat the Knights in the Stanley Cup, uh, I'll have you on Bar Rescue, and I'll name a drink after you. Whoa. And so I forget what I had to do for him if we had lost, but we ended up winning, and then I think we're still trying to figure out when we can pay off that bet. What kind of drink are you thinking? Uh, like a... A Bud Light Seltzer? Or a, a Mad Dog, a Mad Dog cocktail. <laughs> you like Mad Dog 2020? How about I mean, a P- I haven't how about had a P- it since high school. Uh, a PFT Lord Stanley's Cup. Ooh, That's your drink. Yeah, it's a, a PFT, T-E-A. Yeah, and they serve it in like a Stanley Cup yeah. replica. If he does a bar rescue in DC, I'm gonna make him do that. That's a good idea. A PFT, yeah, yeah. like a, a Mike's Hard Tea or whatever. What do they have those? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they have like a Mike, like a, a John Daly, a mix of yes of uh, lemonade, ice lemonade, tea iced tea, and vodka, <laughs> a little vodka. <laughs> yeah, with a Mad Dog floater. The on John top. Daly, they call that. Yeah. So there's, there actually, I might make them do like a margarita. This is what I've been making a lot recently, where you crush up Cool Ranch Doritos, and then you put that on the rim. The rim. Yeah, the trailer wow. parts margarita. That sounds fucking good. Actually. It is pretty good. Yeah. Because you get that little, yeah, that little fire from the chips. Yeah. Oh, flaming hot Cool Ranch Doritos. That would be really good. Yeah. Guy plays instruments. He has an award winning a podcast. Guy. Have we won awards? I don't know if we've won any awards. Have you not? Well, I think you are. I th- <laughs> In my eyes, you have. We, I know we get nominated every year for what is it, the iHeart Award. Yeah. But th- they give that award to like whoever says that they'll show up to the award ceremony. <laughs> and so every year we lose to somebody new. It's like a rotating cast. And so this year it was us against like Colin Coward. Bill Simmons, um, and then the other, the third nominee was like a once every four years, a look behind the female athletes in the Olympic Games. And we're like, well, we're not winning again this year. I I think I know who's winning this one. (laughs) Things we also remember, this was a backdoor sweep. What is it? They call that a gentleman sweep. Is that a gentleman sweep? A backdoor sweep. I like that. that? I've never heard backdoor sweep. Never heard that. Gentleman sweep is... If you win, if you win four games and you lose one, yeah, it's a gentleman sweep. The gentleman sweep. sweep. Backdoor sweep. I've never heard though either. That's, that's, I like that. This is also the Stanley Cup with the celebrations of Ovi. Those were always priceless to watch on 
He was always promoting drinking, which I like, out of an athlete. You don't hear a lot of athletes be like, go get a beer now. Like, I like that energy out of a pro. I mean, he was drunk for a Russian. Like, he was, (laughs) it was noteworthy how drunk he was. And the entire team, I think they were on a bender that lasted like three weeks afterwards. They earned it, man. They would just show up to a different place in D.C., hammered as shit. I remember one time they went to like one of the fanciest restaurants in Washington, like suit and tie place. Uh, that you have to have reservations for like a month, two months in advance. And it was like a quiet evening. They and, showed up naked. And then like, yeah, then it's like Ovi and TJ yeah. Oshi walking through the door shirtless. And they're just like, give me all the liquor. And the entire place just like melts down into a rave just because Ovi came in. It's wow. like, well, it's time to get drunk right now. Uh, th- right after they won the cup though, can I tell the story about like how I experienced the Please. last yeah. two minutes of this game? Are we going to do it? You want to do it like chronologically here? We'll, we'll go through chronologically. We'll, we'll go, go. That's a tease. That's a tease that's right a there. Tease. That's a professional. I don't, right I don't want to jump ahead on the on the rundown of the show, so I'll wait. Uh, things we may have forgotten. Uh, Flurry's incredible postseason up to that point. Four shutouts. Uh, percentage save of 94-7. Crazy. Also with third straight uh, SCF appearance, although he was benched in each of the last two years. That has to be heartbreaking. Or, like, you got to be so nerve nervous when... You're a Capitals fan, and you you see these incredible stats by Flurry. Just came over yeah. from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, I was I was I was a little bit nervous before the the series started. But Gee. again, like the way that we were playing after after the first game, I felt like team of fate. We're on, yeah, team of destiny. We're on a roll. Team of destiny. Uh, let's go to the gaming corner real quick, presented by WinBet. So we're doing it a little differently. This episode with the Gaming Corner presented by WinBet. We had to do this before PFT got here because he's going to be joining in on, on our whole episode. So that we have, this is like full mission, sneak sneak attack mission on this. What are you thinking for the prop bet? What do we do? How do we get him? Uh, what's a fun phrase that we can say? They do call the trophy Lord Stanley Cup. That's good. That's, I mean, a, that's an annoying thing to say, too. I know. Lord Stanley Cup. Did I, did I, I said Lord's. Lord Stanley's. It's Lord Stanley's. It's his possession. So he's been, does that mean he's been knighted? Is that like, is it like Tim Hortons? That's all they talk about up there? Their knightings? <laughs> um, I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, I think Lord Stanley's Cup is plenty annoying. Let's. Make How many the, times? The over under what? Four? Can we hit four? Can we hit four? All right, let's try to remember. We never let's, remember. Yeah, it, it depends on how the flow of the show is going. That seems high, but we'll, we'll see what we could do. Let's do. Let's try. All right, all right, folks at home. If you don't already know, it's time we steered you right. NFL action has finally returned, and if you're like me, you know the value of having a great team behind you, and that's exactly why I play with Win Bet. Entering week one, WinBet has all your favorite markets and even a few exclusive wagers that you won't find anywhere else in the digital gaming industry. WinBet has boosted parlays, season-long prop bets, and all the futures that you can handle. Sign up today and use the promo code XGWN, and after placing your first $100 wager, you will receive $100 to bet with. There is another $10 casino bonus for those that live in New Jersey and Michigan, again, the promo code is XGWN. Terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older to participate. Tell us, break down how the last couple minutes went. First period, no goals. Zero. I, I went outside. I remember I found, I'm not a cigarette smoker, but... When I'm in Vegas, I definitely smoke cigs. <laughs> and they have this, they have the nicest cigarette porch in America at this stadium. So I went outside. It was, there were like couches and shit set up. Um, they have a cigarette station. They have like a, an outdoor lounge just wow. for DJs. Only in Vegas. Yeah. Had a great time. So I blew off some steam there. Uh, came back in, but I bought $250 worth of 50 50 raffle tickets. Then Big Cat hit me up. He was like, get me $250 worth too. And so I got those. I was just like trying to occupy my mind. I knew once the scoring happened, it was going to get crazy. And I just needed to like, I needed to center myself. Yeah. So as all the great yogis teach, go out, burn a few lung darts and then gamble. 
And so that's what I did and came back inside. The scoring gets started. I, I felt okay from the start. The only problem was I think we hit the pipe twice. I think we there were two shots that went off the post. Wide right? Uh, I think it was – Left, I think it was upper left hand corner. Ovi hit a shot that might have hit two posts at the same. It was a double doink. You know what that reminds? Think... You know what that reminds me of? What? When Gordon Bombay hit the post against the Blackhawks. Yeah, on the triple deke. If it was a quarter inch to the right, would have gone in. Would have gone in. Yeah, then maybe he would not have been as hungry to go back and beat the Black Knights. That's or true. The, or the, the what are they? The, 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 the Golden, Golden Knights? Knights? No, the uh, the Blackhawks. Black were they the Hawks and? D2 or D1? I don't know. Mighty Ducks? I forget what, what team they played they off. They were the Hawks, yeah. I know it was Iceland Hawks. and D2. That was D2. That was right. D2, Gunner. My bad for interrupting. No, it's all good. Um, I, I remember seeing Ovi hit the post, and I always feel like if you hit the post twice and it doesn't go and you don't get a goal out of either one of them, that's a game that you're always going to lose mm. because you're going to go back and think like, oh, that shot, like you said, that shot should have gone in. But once the scoring got started, I felt confident until the end of the second period when we fell behind. I think it was three to two at the end of the second period. So I needed to change up the juju a little bit. So I went outside, had another couple cigarettes, <laughs> then went downstairs. The morals that cigarettes are good. And yeah, gambling. rally cigs. And gambling. Yeah. And gambling, yeah. yeah. Oh, somewhere in, the, in between that, I lost the 50-50 raffle. Spoiler alert again. Um, so I went to the bottom row or bottom bowl, and then I found this area that had a lot of Caps fans. I was like, okay, I'm going to go sit with these people. And right when I got down there, that's when DSP scored his goal, where it's actually a lot like the catch that you had against the Falcons, where you just like lay out, you're you know, off your feet, and you just concentrate at the last second. You're able to haul it in. That's what DSP did on that goal. Uh, and that was the tying goal, I believe, on that one. Oh, I did, I did taunt the Golden Knight mascot in the second period. I forget what I said to him. I, I was just in a, a weird zone. But the Golden Knight mascot, I was basically like flipping him off. And <laughs> was it a real night or asshole. was it like a, a mascotty night? I think this one was like, like a medieval times guy. Like yeah. I think mm -hmm. he was wearing the armor and stuff, if I remember correctly. And so I was kind just, of a fun mascot. It is like yeah. I. In retrospect, I, I really liked the franchise. It was just it was a business trip. I was there to to destroy them. So I was well, it's not just, like the Phoenix Suns where they just have a gorilla and you're like, why a gorilla? Oh, there will be no gorilla slander on this podcast. Really? Harambe. Harambe. Yeah. Well, Harambe. But why a gorilla? I don't know. He's awesome though. He just dunks. It's a gorilla that dunks. He's the best mascot maybe in sports. He goes off the trampolines. He does flips and shit. It's true. I just don't understand how you go from Suns to gorilla. I guess that's my thing. But it is a good mascot. Yeah, uh, it, it is. And the, the Knights have good mascots too. And I, I do enjoy like the theatrics around it. I'm, I'm glad that the entire sport isn't like that. But yeah. I feel like Vegas should be like. It's very authentic to like yeah. what Vegas is. So, uh, yeah, Devontae Smith-Pelly, uh, he scored on – yeah, it was – yeah, Brooks Orpic the system on that one at that point i was i was so pumped like it was such a beautiful goal why because it, you see the you see a player that you root for like laying out like that for a goal and that's when as a fan you're like these guys care more than i care about this and that's a good feeling to have leaving it all on the ice play. gotta leave it all on the ice yeah and that's what they did and they did and then we got another goal laura zeller and at the end of the game I remember the last two two minutes of the third period, they pulled the goalie out, and there were like three or four plays in a row where we immediately just iced it. Yeah, we just got it and we just sent it down to the other end, and like maybe a total of four seconds ticked off the clock. So I started doing the math: how many more times do we have to do this to win the game? Is this what the rest of the game is going to be like? And then this was the worst ever. We win a faceoff and we're like battling for the puck, and the clock just turns off. The game <laughs> clock turns off entirely. So I'm sitting here. I have no idea how rigged. much time's left. Something's rigged. Something's going on. My butthole is puckered up to like the size of a lemon seed. I'm freaking out. I'm sweating. I have no idea what's going on. No one in the stadium, like for all we know, the clock's not ticking at all at this point. And we miss a couple of open nets by, you know, a matter of feet. And uh, then eventually the clock comes back on with like 30 seconds left. That's an eternity, by the way. So you're a pucker up kind of guy, huh? When, 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 when you got pressure, you pucker up. Yeah, my body becomes airtight. So you got to have that Tom Brady gene. He doesn't pucker up. He gets loose. He, 
I guess he gets loose. He just doesn't pucker up. That's for Damn, sure. Tom Brady's got a loose butthole. He starts to here first. <laughs> He's got. It's called the clutch gene, guys. <laughs> or the loose butthole, whichever yeah. you prefer. The clutch yeah. gene sounds better. Well, again, I'm not. I'm not a winner. Like I've, I, I, see, I, I'd never won anything before. It's hard for me to believe that. And it, my well, butthole tightens up during movies. Like I'll, I'll, I'll see. Like you ever see Eastern Promises, the the steam room scene where he's like fighting dudes off butt naked. Yeah. My butthole was it was a lemon seed. Like you were saying, it was terrible. <laughs> Only time I pucker up my butthole is when I'm doing G forces in a plane. Because that's how you that's how you you don't pass out. You got to pucker up. How many how many G's have you pulled in a plane? <sighs> None, but that's what I've heard they do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, you, you've been up in like an F-16? I'm just, I, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm supposed to go to the Blue Angels here soon. Oh, F-18s. Yeah, so I've been, uh, you know, kind of prepping for that. I got to watch Top Gun 2 tonight. And Are you going tonight? I'm going tonight. Where's it playing tonight? There's like this uh, little private screening. Oh, okay, here we screening. go. Here we go. You know somebody. Yeah, Miles, Miles, Te Miles Teller's thrown this thing. I don't, I've never met him. But I did see him once. We did. They both like we went to, we went to a movie once in L.A., and it was Miles Teller was in line. And in L.A., if you go to the movie theater and the movie already started, they won't let you in. So we had our tickets. We went to go get some food, and they wouldn't let Miles Teller or me into the movie because we were late. What movie was it? Don't even remember. It was it a Miles Teller movie? I don't think so. <laughs> Sorry, Mister Teller, you can't come I'm, and see Whiplash. I'm fucking. This was like 10 years ago. He was just like getting into the stage. I was like a nobody. I'm pissed off at you. Why? Because you're going to see Top Gun tonight. It doesn't. First of all, the sneak previews for Top Gun don't even really start until tomorrow. You're going to the sneak preview of the sneak preview. I've been looking for this movie for 10 years. We should say we're backlogging episodes. So we, we tape this in advance. Top Gun, by the time this is out, oh, okay. might be on uh, Blu-ray. Well, laser disc whatever the hell i will have already seen the movie too by the time that that you're hearing this so like i i've gotten really into flight simulators recently it's one of the cooler <laughs> things that i do uh and i you like, should pucker I, up when you're turning yeah that it gives you a more realistic experience yeah you got it yeah so you're get, you're getting in i've been trying to find out a way to get into these sneak previews for top dude Gun. i guess tom cruise is like super crazy with this like he doesn't want join anyone. Scientology, dude. You get right in. I'm, I would. You skip the line. I would join. It's like when <laughs> tell when, some dark secrets. You get to see Top Gun, when, dude. When you're in college and you sign up for like a, a credit card with 19 percent APR, so you get a <laughs> shirt that says Philly's Blunt on it or whatever. <laughs> that's what I would do for Top Gun sneak preview tickets. I would like whatever Scientology. Yeah, inject the niacin directly into my veins. I don't give a shit. But good for you. I'm happy for you. I'll let you know how it goes. Good. Yeah. Please I'll, don't. If you spoil I won't it. spoil it. Don't spoil. I don't spoil. I'm not a spoiler. Okay. Cool. What's the legacy of this game, PFT? The legacy of this game is fucking finally. Fucking finally. Fucking finally. So, so we name these games, mm -hmm. games with names. Should we just call this the fucking finally game? Fucking finally. That seems like the, the right name for it. So if the Knicks ever win, we'll call it the fucking fucking finally game. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I'm, that's what, I, I, it gave me joy to watch the video of you because I could just see that you're a real fan. Yeah. And as a Knicks fan, that's the one that just hurts. Like I, I grew up, my first sports memory is the Knicks losing to the Rockets. You yeah. know, game seven, Starks, who I, my favorite player, goes two for 18. Brutal, but you know, uh, someday. Give yeah. me hope someday. All, we, we all can't be winners. The, 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 they came close. And, I, and I, I'd rather... I don't think the Knicks are close. <laughs> yeah, they had one They had one good playoff run. Kind, not even a really good playoff run. They they won a game in the yeah. playoffs. I'm still <laughs> mad at the Knicks. I love R.J. Barrett. I, I have what's hope. The, what's the owner's name? Dolan. Dolan. So I was supposed to go to a Boston Knicks game. And I, I, I was supposed to sit courtside. And he wouldn't let me do it. Really? It's, it's yeah. a, you're a Boston celebrity. You can't have any Boston dude. people can't, in the can't front have a row. Boston celeb in the front row. It's crazy to me it's how, bad juju. how like super, super That's wealthy petty. people, they, they shouldn't have, they should have so many better things to do than to micromanage like what celebrity is allowed to sit near their court. What? What's next? Ben Affleck courtside? We, we got to protect the garden home floor. Well, it's like maybe, I don't Matt know, maybe Damon? spend more time finding good basketball players. That's We, we do have to work on that. <laughs> That's, that would be, that would be the first to work, assignment. The Knicks have to get better. I know we'll get better, I believe. Well, yeah, I, I remember at the end of this game, after it was over, well, with about like 30 seconds left, that's when I first started to believe, okay, it's it's... Like, I first started to unpucker at that point. I got looser, and then I had a decision to make. And my decision boiled down to thus... I was with some people that were um, family members 
of John Carlson, who is a defender, defenseman, whatever you want to call it, on the Capitals. And they were like, this is where they're going to open up the gate to get on the ice if you want to come on the ice right after the game's over. And I was like, okay, yeah. What's the decision? That sounds Well, the, the decision was, to my left, a section and a half, Mark Davis was sitting over there right behind the goal. And he was wearing his all-white jumpsuit, just <sighs> looking like a like Pegasus, like landed behind behind the ice. And I was like, I got to get a picture with Mark Davis. So I jumped over like two, uh, two separate like big dividers just to get over and took a picture with him in the stands, a selfie with Mark Davis at the last second. And I then I came I back that. and tried to get down the ice. And they're like, no, you can't get down here. I was like, well, I may have chose poorly on that one. But <laughs> I don't know. Also, like I got a picture with Mark Davis. <laughs> Man. Was, I guess the, you had to be there. It was confetti pretty cool. or Mark Davis. <laughs> yeah, I, I chose Mark Davis. Well, you got the drink from the cup. It all worked out. I drank from the cup. And then like it was kind of cool seeing Ovi like, skate around the ice holding up the Stanley Cup. There was that one lady that was on the glass behind Ovi and she just like took her top off, like pulled her top down on her dress and pushed her hooters up against the glass as he was skating by on national television. It's like, that's the most Vegas thing that could ever happen here. (laughs) She skated from the Spearmint Rhino for one last show. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, Yeah. it was a good night. It was a very, very momentous night in my life. And it just, it felt good to win one. Pretty awesome. You got to experience it. OV going out, getting his first championship, his first Stanley Cup. This this really is d- d- uh, does wonders for his legacy too. You you need to get that one. Yeah, he would have been forever known as like you know the Dan Marino, Oof. which is tough. Oh, I did forget about the bet. I can't believe I forgot about this bet. Yeah, I don't want to push it because I don't know if you don't want to talk about no, it. No, I can talk. I forgot. Like All right. I I completely spaced on it. Um, I it wasn't so much a bet. As I said at some point at the start of the the Capitals Penguin series, I said if the I would eat shit, I would eat shit for the Capitals to beat the Penguins. Like I would eat horse shit, and then obviously like you say something like that on part of my take, and Hank and Big Cat just jump all over you, and they're oh, like, yeah. "Well, let's define this. Let's talk about this. Let's let's, <laughs> let's nail you down on what you just said there." Because like people say stuff like that all the time, but if you say it on the air, <laughs> then it becomes a real thing, and so we worked out an arrangement where like if the Capitals won that series, I would have to eat horse shit. And <laughs> uh, I went up to Central Park with Hank after that series was over because everyone was saying, oh, if you don't eat shit, then the Capitals are going to lose in the Eastern Conference Finals because you jinxed them. And I actually kind of believe that a little bit. Like, you chose I, horse shit. So I chose horse shit, went up to Central Park. That's dedication right there. Yeah. Went up to one of the carriages, got in the back, grabbed like this what are people saying when you're doing this there's one of the people that is like in charge of driving the the horse and carriage thing just saw me go in there and they're just staring at me like what is this person doing did you swallow it i put it in my mouth i chewed and i tried to swallow but i immediately threw up oh. so I, I gave it an honest effort i saw you had lemon juice with you right i was maybe ginger ale or something ginger maybe sprite ale? i forget no. but i i gave it an honest effort i put it in i chewed it it tastes like the grossest hay that you've oh. ever had and then I immediately just puked everywhere, and there's like families around me watching me do this. <laughs> it was families visiting from Tokyo. Like, look at it. It was pretty embarrassing, but <laughs> Hank was there to verify that I actually uh, did do it. Jack, did we forget anything? We're pretty clean um, as far as Ovechkin's dad goes. Looks like he played high level soccer. His mom, of course, uh, a hooper. And then as far as the Subway tuna deal goes, there have been a couple lawsuits, one in Ireland recently that claimed they couldn't find amplifiable amounts of tuna in, I think it was six feet of Subway subs, tuna subs. And then it was also dismissed here in the U.S. Um, The suit said they found detectable sequences of chicken DNA within it. Judge threw it out. So Subway skated on that one. Big, uh, big sub. And pork, not kosher. I know. Um, Yeah. Wizards did win in 1978 with Wes Unseld. Yeah, beating the Supersonics four to three. I'm a moron. I knew that. I just I, I switched up the Wizards and the and the uh, Capitals in my head for a brief second. And then uh, the Mighty Ducks played the Hawks. Just and they were the Bullets when they won, right? They weren't the Wizards. They right? were the Bullets. Yeah. You know what the the new expansion team for the NFL in DC should just call themselves the Washington Bullets. <laughs> That'd be awesome. That would have been. They were cool as hella jerseys. I think those like Calbert Chaney Bullets. You're like that's a clean looking jersey. Yep. And then uh, a little quick rundown on the origin of the Phoenix Gorilla. Apparently it started in 1979 when Henry Rojas 
a West Phoenix native who was working as a part-time uh, greeter doing singing telegrams got called to do one at the stadium. And uh, when fans caught him walking by the court, he kind of busted into a show and the rest is history. Ten years later, he was the mascot and he's been a beloved uh, guy in Phoenix ever since. I'll shut up. I'm wrong. It's cool. Fake until you make it. I like that. <laughs> I think of the Dancing Homer Simpsons episode, mm -hmm. a fucking classic. PFT named the game the fucking finally game. We ha we like to score our games afterwards after we watch and okay. then and do it. Um, and we get the the medium of the, the totals and we come up with the score, the stakes of this game. What do you think of the stakes on this well, game? They're up 3-1. It's the Stanley Cup, but they're up 3-1. So yeah, we're talking can't, about the last you game. You can't go too high. Cause if we lose this game, we lose the cup, though. I'm I'm convinced of that. Yeah? I think if we lose, if we, if it's 3-2... Yeah, you think I, they're taking three in a row off, off of Vetchkin? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, like I've seen some bad shit happen before. <laughs> I've seen us lose three one leads. So before. where do you go? Where I, do I think you go? The Rangers stakes? came back from three one actually. Uh, they uh, just they just did against one the out of ten Pittsburgh. usually. If, if it's if I'm being honest, I'll say stakes seven. Okay, that's because it's not it's not an elimination game for us. So I'll admit that we star also power. we go star power. Yeah, Ovi Oshi. Two pretty big names. Flurry, pretty big name. I'm still going to go with like, uh, let's say like a seven. Because it's, it's hockey. You know, like a, a lot of Americans aren't, you're not drawn into the role players that much. We all know Ovechkin, yeah. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know too many names in this for sure. Yeah, I'm going seven. The gameplay, 10. It was a great game. If you go back and you watch it, start to finish, it was an awesome, it was exhilarating. Like even in the first period where there weren't any goals. That crazy play. The goal. I, I can't compare across sports. 9-5? Nine, 9-5. Five. Nine, five. All right, 9-4-5. Nine, All right. 9.49. Nine, four, four, nine. We'll give him 9-4-9. Four, nine. <laughs> there we uh, go. The name, the fucking I actually love the, I love the name. Me too. I love the name. Because it, it, it's so much about being a fan, you know? Yeah, it is. It's more about, yeah, like it's about the weight that went into it. FFG. Fucking finally game. I mean, I think about the Chicago Cubs fans and how long they had to wait. You know, it's, there's something cool as hell about that. The Red mm -hmm. Sox fans with the yeah. curse of the Bambino. Yeah. I mean, I would say it's an eight. I'll take an eight. All right. What's our grand total, Jackie? 7.8725. 7, 9. Is that, is that below average for what you guys normally do here? I mean. You guys talked me into, into downgrading the gameplay from a 10 to a 9.49. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we didn't talk you into it. We, we just, haven't given a round 10, I don't think, to anything, have we? And we've done, you know, Pats, Giants, 18. Like, we've done a bunch of big games. This is a, this is a huge game, yes. It's a pretty good score. It's a, it's a decent score. I mean, it's a, it's right. a, you know, if it was curved right, that could be a, you know, B minus C plus. It depends who you ask, too. Yeah, it depends on who you like, ask. Like, if you're not a hockey fan, it might not mean the same to you. Yeah, but it's also not like there's nothing crazy historic. There is, it's their first championship but this specific game i don't know it's kind of disrespectful to the memory of anthony bournay and for if you give it that low of a score <laughs> so like say how can the stakes only be a seven if he offed himself right afterwards because he was so depressed well you know i didn't it was it's he a vegas fan is, that's, is it confirmed yeah huge well the, you know he had a ryan reeves tattoo and he was like no that's can't this can't be happy <laughs> all right that's that's a little dark i'm sorry <laughs> Thanks for coming in into our gridiron. Yeah, it's nice in here. This yeah. is a really nice studio, actually. I love it. Thank you. You know, it's, you know, I was a little banged up. It was my birthday this last weekend. Oh, and, thanks and, for the invite to the party. And, and to the Top Gun premiere. You know, <laughs> you're a great friend. But I just want to let you know that you're the inspiration of, you know, podcasting, you know, when you're not feeling the, the best. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you got to podcast hurt. You got to play hurt sometimes. You got to play hurt. Absolutely. You that's, know? That's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> As I'm you get older, you'll learn to do that. With less and less frequency. We're, we're backlogging a bunch of episodes, so now people are just going to think Julian is hung over every episode. I know. It's a good like, recurring This guy's a drinking problem. Yeah. Jesus. Cool. <laughs> and thanks again, PFT, for joining us. This, this, this was fun. This was great. Thank you Thanks guys for man. having me. Well, back to the gaming corner presented by WinBet. PFT just left. I'm, I, I completely forgot. I think we both said it once. I might have done it twice, or was it just once? I counted one apiece, so we clocked in at two total. Oh, I stink. I'm sorry. I spaced. I was a little intimidated. Yeah. You he's know? a pro. He's, he's a pro. He's, he's one of the best at what he does. He's one of the best at what he does in this world. So uh, 
I was just thinking about trying to get the best possible content out of them. And yeah. clearly forgot everything about the bet. And we, you know, this is not our area of expertise, hockey. So we kind of let him roll with it a little bit. We, wanted, we wanted him to take over. You know, we're, we're, we're hockey by association guys. I, I love hockey. I respect hockey. Playoff hockey is, to me, as good as it gets in sports. Yeah. Like, when, it's, when the clock's winding down, holy shit, man. You know, I didn't get introduced to hockey until I moved to Boston, really. I, the only hockey memory I have as a kid was getting lost, going to the Cow Palace to see the 94 Sharks while they cool were an expansion colors. team. Huh? They had cool colors. Yeah, unbelievable. But, you know, we got there in the third quarter, or the third period, the third quarter, such a football guy. <laughs> so, you know, we're not, we're not hockey guys. <laughs> yeah. But... uh I got there in the fourth inning, and I uh, no, I think you know I was a Rangers guy growing up. I was spoiled with a, you know a team that had Mark Messier, Mike Richter, Brian Leach, uh, Alexei Kovalev. I believe was a rookie on that team. I mean, they were stacked. Adam Graves. So I was so spoiled with this awesome team. And then the NHL fucked up, and it became impossible to find on cable. I don't know if they were on the the Oprah Network or whatever the hell they were on. Own? What the hell? Own? Yeah, whatever. I couldn't find a game, so I kind of fell out of it for a while. And now I'm just kind of getting back in. The I, Rangers are good again. It's a great time to get back in. Yeah. You know, I I just never, I don't know the game. And then, I, I mean, I went out to Boston, learned it, enjoy it. Just like you said, playoff hockey's awesome. And you had a hot team when you were there. We the had Bruins. a hot team. You know, and, and, and experiencing hockey in person is really the key. Yeah. You got to go to a game to, to really feel that. Because I can't even see the puck on TV. It's tough. It's tough. Remember when they had the little follow thing or follow the puck for a little while? I remember that for a second, but that didn't pan out. But we definitely did not hit the over. We did not. But it was a great app. And, uh, you know, thanks again to uh, WinBet. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, to our listeners. Follow us at Games With Names. I'm Sam Morell. And I'm Julian Edelman, and we'll see you guys next time down that old dusty road. <laughs>